Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hannah. I post videos on all things fashion and beauty related that are also vegan and cruelty free. I also do some vlogs and yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you like what you see, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and hit the bell notifications if you want to be notified about future videos. So today's video is a little different. I don't have my normal setup. I'm actually just on my vlog camera. Um, so if the quality is a little less than, that's why. But um, this is a video that is really personal. So basically, The Vegan View Girls, if you're not familiar, I am one third of a YouTube talk show called The Vegan View, where we post about all things in the vegan community. We do taste tests. Um, it's a really fun show, so definitely check it out if you're not already subscribed. I'm sure most of you are, but the girls and I have been talking a lot lately about the vegan community. There's been a lot of people coming out and saying that they're not vegan anymore. And um, we wanted to participate in this sort of movement where people are making videos about why they're still vegan. So this is in collaboration with them. I will link their videos and their channels down below. So definitely go give them some love and check them out. Um, but for right now, I figured I would tell my story. And I've never actually filmed a why I'm vegan in the first place video on here. So I figured I would kind of like do that and tell you why I'm still vegan at the same time. And I'm not sure why I keep putting it off. I think it's because it means so much to me and it's a topic that I don't want to mess up because I feel like if this is the only vegan video you click on, I hope that I do it justice. So growing up, I did not grow up in a vegan household whatsoever. We have a tap dancer on the loose. As I was saying, growing up, I did not grow up in a vegan household at all. I grew up in Arkansas and we ate very southern. Fried chicken was my favorite food. Um, I used to eat steak for my birthday dinners and yeah, um, I don't know if you've ever been to the south or those of you that live in the south, you know it's very meat and dairy heavy. Um, so my diet was very far from vegan. Once I turned 18 and I went to college, I started noticing some pretty recurring digestive issues that had never happened to me before. I had been talking to a girl in my sorority and she was telling me about celiac disease and how she can't process wheat. So I thought, oh, maybe that's what I have because um, her symptoms sounded really similar to mine. So I started cutting out um, gluten and as a result, I ended up cutting out dairy, which I later learned I'm highly intolerant to. And I was feeling a lot better. So I thought that it was the gluten, um, but then once the symptoms persisted, I decided to go and have an official test done at my doctor's. So I had a food allergy test done and they also tested for um, gluten. And gluten did not show up as anything I was allergic to, but my doctor and I came to the conclusion that it was definitely the dairy. So um, starting around 18 years old, I've been intolerant to dairy and I have avoided it pretty much as much as I could. Like, I think, you know, looking back, there were things I could get away with where I would take like a lactate and I would just power through, but I definitely still had the symptoms. Um, and then some things like if there was a lot of cheese, I definitely couldn't eat it at all. I would get very sick. So even though I grew up eating dairy a lot, I ate a lot of mac and cheese, um, I grew intolerant to it. And then fast forward to being an adult. It's hard to pinpoint exactly everything that led up to me being vegan because I like to say that a lot of things in my life planted a seed. Every time I met a vegetarian and I would ask them questions, I would always kind of be like, oh yeah, like I do feel weird about an animal being on my plate. and. Um, I feel like it was always there inside of me, this like interest in not eating animals, but I just really didn't know that that was a possibility. And I ended up meeting this guy in, um, I was studying for a financial certification back when I worked in finance and I ended up meeting this guy um, in my class who was vegan and we would go to Veggie Grill, a big group of us would go to Veggie Grill on our lunch breaks and we would talk about it. And he actually had a really great approach to it that I always try to keep in mind is that, um, you know, when we were asking him questions, he was like, you know, I don't really like to talk about it at the table or like, um, like he just didn't really want to talk about it at all, which was kind of, it kind of intrigued me. And because he didn't want to talk about it, I started 
looking into it and doing my own research as well. As this was going on, my digestive issues were actually getting worse and worse and worse, which was very confusing to me because I had cut out dairy and I knew that that was the main problem of my issues, but they were persisting. So, um, and at this time I was definitely eating a very meat heavy diet. Um, so I ended up going to a few different doctors and having a bunch of different tests done. I went and had my blood work done again and it, everything came up inconclusive, which is very frustrating. Um, the next step to basically try to figure out what was wrong with me was going to be surgery and I did not want to do that. So I basically decided I wanted to put matters into my own hands because I did, I didn't want to go through that hell anymore of all the blood tests and all of the other tests and all of the doctor's visits and truthfully it was expensive even though I had insurance at the time it ended up costing me a lot of money. So I ended up looking up digestive issues on YouTube and trying to find solutions that way and I stumbled upon the vegan YouTube community. Truth be told, at that point in time, this was three and a half years ago, I thought that the vegan YouTube community was crazy and I definitely watched a lot of like anti-vegan videos at that point in time too because I just thought, wow, these people are nuts. And in my mind, it was not possible to be vegan. Like I just thought, you're gonna die if you're vegan. Like how do you not eat all these foods that, that I was raised to think are essential to health and life. But at the same time, I had this love for animals that I couldn't ignore. So for example, I adopted this little guy and I have had him for officially four years this month. Yeah, it's your four year anniversary, hello. And I adopted him through a rescue, Mayday Rescue, who I talk about a lot on my channel. Um, because I have since fostered for them. Well, pretty quickly after adopting him, I knew I wanted to foster. I started going to my local shelter and getting dogs off of death row because I found this Facebook page which would post the dogs and be like, this dog needs to get out within two days or it's gonna get put to sleep. So I would go, I would text Natalie from Mayday and be like, I wanna foster this dog and I would go pick up the dog and I would foster it. It was a very emotionally draining part of my life um, and I put a lot of energy into it. The most rewarding thing in the world, but also I really felt a need to fight for these animals. I couldn't fathom that a dog like my dog would could potentially be one of those that could be in the shelter at risk of being put to sleep because the shelters are overcrowded. And I started feeling a little hypocritical, um, especially because I saw a video on Facebook where it was like uh, people in a grocery store and they're asking if you want pork and then they pick up a baby pig and they put it in the grinder and everybody's like, no, 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 don't do that. And it just kind of shows the hypocrisy of like, oh, you'll, you'll buy that pork if it's just at the grocery store in a wrapper, but you're not gonna buy it if you have to watch the live pig get slaughtered in front of your face. And I remember watching that video and being like, damn, I am a huge hypocrite. And I ended up watching more pig farm videos because of that. And I realized that pigs are very smart, intelligent creatures and they're very similar to dogs in a lot of ways. I mean, that's why you see a lot of people who have pigs as pets because they are very smart. And I started just feeling like, how can I care so much about these dogs in the shelter and saving their lives and not care about the animals I sit down to eat in front of my plate three times a day? Like, I'm a, I'm a hypocrite. And that video made me realize that I wouldn't want to see an animal get slaughtered in front of my face. I'd be horrified. I'd be crying. I'd be distraught. But I would have no problem going into a grocery store and paying for the animal that was already slaughtered. And in a way, I, I'm contributing to that with my dollar. That was really a, a pivotal moment for me because I started to recognize the ethical side of not eating animals um, in addition to wanting to cure my health. So the first things I cut out were pork and red meat and I definitely started to see a difference in my digestion and my health. So that was just kind of like a bonus of all of it, but it was definitely for me um, an ethical decision. 
and for some reason in my head I had still in my head because I hadn't done the research I convinced myself that chickens and fish were not as sentient as pigs and cows so it was okay for me to eat them so I continued to eat chicken fish and eggs um, then this continued for quite a while and then I ended up stumbling across the documentary Veducated on Netflix and so I decided to watch it. I'm not really sure why, I just did. I turned it on and I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to start stop filming for a second to get water because I'm dying. Okay, sorry, my throat was feeling really dry. So I got some vegan cheese, this is the BioLife cheese and some water. Hopefully this will like coat my throat so I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me rewind a little bit before I watched Veducated because I started doing a ton of research because whenever I don't want to believe that something is true, I try to find arguments that are going to like support that. You know what I mean? So I really didn't I wanted to find an argument that could tell me it was okay to eat meat and that it was ethical and that it was gonna be good for my body. So I would search for arguments that meat eaters have against veganism and then I would search for arguments that vegans have against eating meat. And it just started to all click and settle in for me. And I would just remember like crying to my boyfriend like, this just doesn't seem right. There's just like, there's this part of me that feels like it's not okay and he was like no like this is how it's been like this our ancestors ate this way people our parents and our grandparents ate this way and they're fine they're not dying so like everything's fine he had all these like counter arguments for me I would like also look at the digestive systems of carnivores versus herb herbivores and for me as someone who was struggling with digestive issues that was something that was very um, interesting to me because I'm not gonna go like super into detail but my digestive issues were so bad to the point where like I would have to go home sick from work like I would have to call in sick to work because I didn't feel like I could function for like a full few hours and so that it was really starting to affect me in a way that was not like it was ruining my quality of life so i was looking at the digestive systems and it made so much sense to me with the amount of red meat and stuff that i was eating that our bodies aren't meant to process it like my teeth are not meant to chew that up into a way that my digestive tract can move that through smoothly so I definitely did a ton of reading and a ton of research before watching Vegucated. And when I sat down to watch Vegucated, it really brought it all together for me. So I watched it alone, um, but Jesse was home and he was in the other room. And if you're not familiar with Vegucated, it's a older documentary. Like it's not fancy and beautiful or anything like that, but it's about a group of people who are total meat eaters and only want to look at veganism for the health aspects because they want to lose weight or get healthier, what have you. So they go through everything. They go through meeting with doctors, talking about the vegan diet. They switch out their fridge with all vegan foods. And then it gets to the part of the documentary where they look at the ethical side of things. So they sit down and they watch the factory farming. Um, <sighs> <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I cry in every single video on this channel. You guys probably think that I'm just, I just cry all the time. I swear I'm a very happy person. Um, when it got to the factory farming stuff, I had never seen anything like that before. And I um, just couldn't believe that animals are treated that way. And even if you know it and seeing it is such a different thing and I love animals so much obviously like I love my dogs and I think so often there's this disconnect between loving your dogs and loving your cat and loving all animals and you might think that you do but um, if you're eating them there's that's not love and that's not respect towards another living creature so um it really just kind of like opened my eyes to some I don't want to be a part I don't want to be a part of that anymore and 
that didn't that didn't align with who I felt I was as a person and so um it was easy easier for me to watch uh the cows and the pigs because I had already made that decision not to consume those animals but when it got to the chickens I just lost it um because I had convinced myself that it was okay to eat them um and I really just recommend watching it for yourself because um I think you can take what you want out of that um but at that point in time I had called in Jesse and I begged him to watch it and we rewind we rewound the footage and we watched it again and um we just afterwards we just kind of looked at each other and he was like well he's like I think we have to be vegan and I was like yeah I think so too and those words coming from his mouth were the most shocking thing I've ever heard because this is a guy who had been arguing with me for months on why it's okay to eat meat and also this is a guy who really ate nothing but meat and dairy like he's never had any kind of health issues or stomach problems and he has a stomach of steel and he ate Philly cheesecake Philly cheesesteaks and pizza and um burritos and like that was what he ate so to hear him say that was just like okay like we are on the same page like this is not who we are we are not people who want to contribute to this so um we were basically just like all right well we're in this together we're gonna figure out what we're gonna eat and from then on it was like all right so at this place we can eat this at this place we can eat this and a lot of like figuring out what we could cook at home and you know we're super fortunate to live in Southern California even three and a half years ago the grocery store didn't even have a quarter of what it has now so it's amazing what you can find now in your grocery store and the amount of options that there are and we just kind of made it like this fun adventure this fun new adventure where we'd go drive to new restaurants that we wouldn't try before or we'd try a new recipe that we um, wouldn't have tried before and you know I mean it was so long ago I really wish I would have made more videos then but uh it, we did it I mean it's possible and we both felt amazing like we've never felt better okay so that is kind of a summed up version of why I went vegan so now let's talk about why I'm still vegan I'm still vegan because I've never felt healthier than I do today I am so free mentally and physically from the chains that I felt food held against me before I was vegan. Before I was vegan, I was constantly crash dieting, I was trying all the new fads, and I never felt like anything was satisfying to me. I felt hungry all the time, I felt disappointed after meals, and I felt really hard on myself because I couldn't do what I felt these other girls and guys could do when it came to dieting I couldn't commit to it because I was always hungry and I felt weak and I was miserable and I couldn't sustain on a grilled chicken and veggie diet that didn't that didn't taste good to me and I wasn't happy with that and now on a vegan diet I eat whatever I want pretty much you know within reason I'm not eating Oreos all day but I eat a lot of plants that are delicious and healthy and fuel my body I'm not afraid of carbs I eat pasta and bread and I feel good and I am eating alternatives that are very similar to the foods that I have always loved like burgers and hot dogs and pizza but I'm eating a vegan version of it, so I'm not missing out. And if anything, I feel like I'm thriving more than I ever have before because I'm eating stuff that didn't have a life, that didn't, wasn't held against its will, held in captivity, held in disgusting conditions, and then forced to die so that I could eat it. I'm eating stuff that grew from the earth, that the earth has gifted us, and it's, amazing like it's the best thing in the whole world I can't even believe it like I I'm three and a half years vegan and I go to the grocery store and I'm just like hell yeah I look at my cart and I'm like this is all plants this is all stuff that 
didn't, that wasn't, that didn't have a, a terrible life and a terrible death. Like I'm contributing to something greater than myself. And I didn't want to be a selfish person anymore. I am a human, so I am selfish. But if I can prevent being selfish in a certain way, then I'm going to do it. I am still vegan because I see myself as a feminist. I see myself as somebody who believes in equal rights, who believes that everybody should tr be treated with respect. And being vegan aligns with that. I include animals in that. We are animals. Just because we don't speak their language doesn't mean that we're better than them and doesn't mean that we have the right to rape them or take their lives. I don't know where we got that idea, but just because things were done in the past and have always been that way doesn't make them right. If we were to keep that mentality and still do them today, we would be monsters. So we have to progress. We have to look at our actions and say, is this right? Is this a good thing to do? Is this good for the world? Is this good for creatures? Is this good for ourselves? And if the answer is no, then we have to reassess. And I believe in us as a society and I know that we can do it, but that's why I can't sit here and say, I'm a feminist and I believe in equal rights and then turn around and support the rape of mother cows and support the murder of species, certain species, just because we think they taste good. So that's why I'm still vegan. I'm also still vegan because aside from all of the things I believe, I have met some of the most amazing people in this community who really care about other humans and animals and the world. And it's a really inspiring, cool community to be a part of. I feel so lucky, so lucky to be a part of a community that is making a difference. And I'm not saying all vegans are included in that community because just like any community, there's nasty people in the world and there are people who are mean. But the majority of real life vegans I have met in this world are the kindest, most amazing people I've ever met. And I am so proud to have them in my life. I'm still vegan because I care about the planet and I wanna give our future generations a planet that is healthy and something that they can be proud of. And I don't wanna be part of the society that's killing the planet. I am not perfect by any means when it comes to the planet, but if I can do my part by by not eating something that is going to be hard on the planet, that's a step in the right direction. I am still vegan because I don't believe that we have the right to choose what animals should live and what animals shouldn't live. I love my dogs more than anything in this world, but I don't believe that they have a right to live over a cow or a pig. I think that all life is precious and all life deserves to exist as it was put on this earth to exist. This mass production of factory farmed animals that's so artificial and so savage is not, that is not my world and I don't believe in that. And this mass production of factory farmed animals is not natural, it's not okay and I don't believe that we have the right as humans to say that those animals should die. My battery's gonna die, but thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you check out the other girls' videos down below and make sure you check out the Vegan View for more vegan content and um, future videos will not be quite as serious, but I hope that you found this inspiring in some way or maybe helpful and thank you again for watching. I love you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.